He hosts his own radio show called Educated Insanity. From Chicago, please welcome Jay Washington. I that's what's up. How's everybody feeling? Yeah. All right, thank you to this side of the room for participating. How about everybody over here? How are you guys feeling? Yeah. <laughs> That's good, man. I'm feeling great because gas is back at $2 a gallon. Woo! Woo! Thank you, Petroleum Jesus. Because <laughs> I like to designate my Lord and Savior by the causes I'm thanking him for. <laughs> thank you, Flaming Hot Jesus. <laughs> thank you, She's Not Pregnant Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta designate them. Cause I'm happy, man, gas is back at two dollars. Remember over the summer when it was like four or five dollars a gallon? You couldn't even walk up to the window with pride and confidence. You was embarrassed just to get gas. You would walk up talking about, let me get to another pump them four. You didn't even want to look at the dude, let me get to another pump them four. He get over the speaker, <laughs> what'd you say? Let me get to another pump them four. You sound like Kobe Bryant in all his post-game interviews. We can tell him about him before. Shaq big ass be lying too. He know he can't fit that damn Buick. <laughs> Gas went down to $2, changed everything. I don't care who you are. Changed everything. You was able to walk up to the window with confidence, pride, head up, chest out. Yeah. Let me get $10 on pump number four. And some Reese's. A lottery ticket. Oh, that's a 20. Baby, you want gas too? I'll be back later. <laughs> you had confidence. Cause you couldn't have it. You couldn't even do basic things when gas was four or five dollars a gallon. You had to start rearranging the life decisions. You had to start asking certain people, are you really worth coming to see? <laughs> Grandma? Like, how long do you think you have? Like, <laughs> do you think you can hold out to after the holidays when gas prices typically go down? <laughs> Four or five dollars a gallon would change everything. Like, you would have to suck up your pride and ask people for rides you never wanted to ride with. Have you ever had to do that? Do you know how much it hurts down here in the cockles of your soul? I don't even know what cockles is. I just heard it and people do this. Do you know how much it hurts? You probably never had to do what I did. I walked up to one car, I was like, excuse me, look here, uh, officer. Listen, uh, you think you can give me a ride about two and a half miles down the road because I ain't got no gas in the car, no money for a bus card, and can we do it this time without the handcuffs? Because... I know you got a reputation of hold as a police officer, but I got a reputation of hold as a free man. So, you think I can sit up in the front seat this time? <laughs> it's changing everything. It would change even the most basic and simple of things, like booty calls. Let's be honest, at four and five dollars a gallon, who in the hell is getting up at two, three in the morning for a booty call? Exactly. At four or five dollars a gallon, fellas, you'll get a call at two, three in the morning, the female tell me something, hey, I'm just sitting here laying here thinking about you. Why don't you come on over? What you doing? You be like, shit, I'm asleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be different, man. Before gas was that high, fellas, you would either pick a girl up or you would call and tell her, look, catch a cab over here. Then afterwards, I'm gonna call you a cab back or I'll drop you off. Not at five dollars a gallon. <laughs> Cause you get done doing what you do, she get up talking about thank you. That was the greatest six and a half minutes of my life. <laughs> so what we gonna do? You gonna drop me off? You gonna call me a cab? You be like, uh, I got this empty drawer over here. You can put your clothes in here cause you live here now, bitch. <laughs> Listen, uh, <laughs> call my landlord in the morning, get this lease thing taken care of. You know, unless you wanna wait till after the holidays to leave, but I gotta go see my grandmama first. I got priorities. <laughs> I do, I got priorities, I got kids. Does anybody else in here got kids around applause? That was the most desolate sound claps ever for your kids. Anybody got kids? What the hell? He got to be bringing them up. We left and came out here for a reason. 
I'm a proud father, man. I'm a proud father of an 11 year old that I know he's mine because the test proved it. Uh, <laughs> like, I know that about my son. I know a lot about my son. Like, I know my son is bad as hell. Anybody else here got bad ass kids will admit it? Yeah. Oh, I'm the only one that's gonna raise his hand up in hell. I hate people who got bad ass kids that act like they have no idea where these little demonic ass heathens that came from. <laughs> Because you'll hear people use this one line, this one excuse all the time to justify their kids. They'll go, there's no such thing as bad kids. There's only bad parents. Bullshit. Because <laughs> we all in this room at one point in time have been either in a grocery store or a department store. You've heard somebody's child running two, three hours over freely like they need to be on one of those body leashes. Don't you just sometimes want to stick your foot out, trip the shit out of them, and when their parents walk up, you'd be like, I have no idea how he bust all of this. <laughs> Maybe he shouldn't be running. <laughs> and if you're not laughing, that's because I'm probably talking about your kid, okay? But well, people don't realize bad-ass kids are super impressionable. They pick up on everything their parents do and say, and they'll put their parents' business out in the street no matter where they go, because kids do not have a filter. They don't. I was back home at the laundromat, minding my own grown man business. Did you hear me, sir? Grown man business. <laughs> This little black girl, she grabbed her little brother's arm and was like, Traviante. Who the hell names their baby Traviante? <laughs> you set that baby up for failure. But it got worse. It got worse. She was like, Traviante, come on, come on. Let's play Section 8. What in the hell is Section 8? Because our Section 8 is a government housing program. It is not the ghetto's former house ever. It's not. But I'm nosy, right? I want to know how this game is played in case my 11-year-old decides he wants to play it with me and I'm not left out the loop. So I stopped minding my grown man business. I'm not minding these kids' business. Listening to her break down the rules to her brother talking about, this is how we gonna play it. I'ma play the caseworker. You play mama's boyfriend. Now you run in the basement and go hide like you're not supposed to be here. I said, oh shit. Let me put these quarters in this dryer. Go write this stuff down. This is hilarious. <laughs> hey y'all, we great money. That's my time. My name is Jay Washington. I'm out of here. Keep it going for the next video, y'all. Here comes to say.